when I'm bored and I want to make music, I just start recording random samples in here, like, like that's some kind of percussion shit. Drop it like it's hot. What is up everybody, Hexagon Jack here. Apologies that I'm shirtless right now. It's extremely hot here in BC, Canada. I blame the heat. Why I'm shirtless right now and why YouTube probably will have a problem with that. YouTube, if you're watching this video, it's hot, okay? My fan is going and it's still hot. So, <laughs> but in today's video, I'm gonna be uh, teaching you guys how to make Britum. Uh, there's not really much good uh, YouTube tutorials out there. I'm not saying there's no good YouTube tutorials. There definitely are some good ones, like uh, Over Senpai made a good one. I think that's how you pronounce that name. Uh, Kroth. Cro I, I, I just call him Kroth. Kroth also made a good one. Uh, how to make uh, the base from extraterrestrial. Yes, I said that right. I always get that name wrong, but I finally said it right. But yeah, I wanted to make like a good sort of like tutorial how to make it because like most of the tutorials I've seen on YouTube were like, add drums, add bass, add sub bass. And I'm just like, that's not a fucking tutorial. That is how to organize a track. That is not how you make a... Whatever. Anyway, let's go into the Reaper DAW, and I'll show you how to make Britum. Alright, here we are in the DAW that I use. Uh, it's called Reaper. I bought it recently. I think this month, I think, that's when I bought it. Um, so I made a basic 4-bar Britum drum loop. Uh, made out of company samples. So uh, let's take a listen. Alrighty, pretty nice. Uh, let me actually turn down the volume in OBS. You gotta get to see behind the scenes. <laughs> but I I've also recently been doing something where I would take, uh, I would just layer tight dubstep and a snare and another snare and then just leave it as it is. I faded in the tail end to nice release because it actually sounds really cool. Anyway, let's get into some base design. Let's open up Serum. I used to use Vital, but uh, I'm strictly using Serum now because I saw a rent-to-own thing on Splice. Let's add in my fat base rack, which makes bases fat instantly. Oh. Yeah! Fat base. Alright, so if you're looking to get that company sound, uh, there's these Live 10 wavetables I've been using. They're actually kind of hard to find, but they're not really. I know Dripmint made a video on, uh, he actually linked the Live 10 wavetable download in the description. I'll leave a link to that video in the description so you can go pick up the Live 10 wavetables. And also, check out Dripmint as well, because he's, he does some amazing tutorials, better than me. But we're going to be using Amber. You can, you can use any wavetable you want. I'm not saying there's only one. I'm not saying only the Live 10 wavetables you can use. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, to why you can use, why I'm saying you can use any wavetable. Because there's actually a technique with the filter that gets the sound going. But we're going to use Amber, which sounds like this. Pretty chunky already. We're going to modulate this. I already made an LFO shape here. We're going to modulate this here. Turn it on trigger, and we should get this. Sounds not great, I know. Alright, so we're going to go into uh, Live 10 Wave Tables again, and we're going to grab Brutal Metal, and we're going to do FM from B. So now we should get... Nice. Now, this is where the sound actually forms. We go to band 12. I actually did learn this from uh, when company was doing live streams on upsound.com before it shut down. And uh, you turn it to the side, turn it on bipolar, and this is what we should get. Yeah, and you can use any wavetable for that. I've tried like with the VR tables, the massive wavetables and stuff, and they still get that company sound with the band 12 filter. You can use any filter as well. I'm not telling you how to produce or anything. <laughs> but um, 
let's form another weight tempo like this. I usually use LFO one as my push pull and LFO two, uh, two, uh, LFO tool. Yeah, LFO tool. I said it again. LFO tool. Shit. LFO two as my actual shape of the sound. I had a bit of a brain fart there. So uh, let's mess up the sound with LFO tool two. I almost did it again. I have tool in my head. Nice. We're getting that uh, company remix of Elenium. Uh, I sometimes use sync, but something my friend suggested to me is to try out Ben plus minus. You could get different, um, results with Ben plus minus too. You don't have to use sync. I know company use sync all the time with his basses. You don't have to use sync. Uh, I might be wrong about him using sync all the time. You can add another photo to FM from B2 if you want. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but in this case, it works. Now we're going to go to effects. Uh, you can add your own effects, too, if you want. Uh, we're going to go to Hyper Dimension. I've actually started using Hyper Dimension more. I've actually started doing this, where I would turn the mixes down, and I would modulate them up. Beautiful. Now with distortion, uh, there's a trick that company taught me as well, uh, where you use diode 2 and you use the LFO to modulate it up. He, he said that it's actually the best distortion for this kind of stuff, uh, is diode 2. Then some OTT. I usually turn the release all the way up, just so um, it doesn't sound as crunchy. EQ. I usually do this EQ all the time. Nice. Another one. Now that sounds pretty cool, but we can make it sound better by modulating it up with the second LFO. a uh, comb filter again you can add any filter you want comb plus flange whatever it doesn't really matter you could also go a little bit crazy and add some uh, reverb Or you can add some tonal delay. Let's add some tonal delay. Sorry about upstairs, but I think my roommate just got home. Um. You can add some tonal delay, you can add some chorus as well. You can add a phaser. You can add a flanger. It really doesn't matter. So now let me actually set up the side chain. Ooh. Why did I make a marker there? I'm actually going to set up the, uh, the sidechain uh, process that I do uh, on every single one of my base projects, or just bases in general. I do that, and I separate the hi-hat, just so it's not sidechaining the hi-hat either. Why not just use a drum sampler? I do have one, but I barely use it for some reason. I don't know why. But here's how you do routing on Reaper. So this is a tutorial in one. <laughs> Uh, so, if you're doing like the drum folder, click on add a new send, and then click on your bass that has the compressor on it, and then just do three and four, and then, um, it's actually, oops, it's doing that, oh, probably because I have the 
when you have also when you have a track highlighted too, um, it copies it onto another track. That can be useful um, in certain certain cases. But also, I, I always have my bases on uh, E one because uh, it's not like Soundbridge. I've been using Soundbridge for a long time. E zero uh, is what you use to get the bases to sound like they do. Uh, in this case, it's E one. So this is what we got. Now that sounds pretty cool, but it's lacking a sub. So I made a sub template on uh, Reaper here with uh, an overdrive distortion and Vital, which is a sub, which is a free synth that you can download right now. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it's basically just a sine wave um, Vital preset for a sub bass I use. Uh, I basically just copy the bass line down here, and now. Yeah, so now for final mixing and mastering, I'm going to put an OTT on the master. Uh, OTT. Uh, a trick that uh, Loprov and uh, Trauma taught me was to put the um, depth down at 10 and turn the time all the way up sometimes too. Beautiful. Well, folks, that's how you make Britum. Alrighty, folks, that's how you make Britum or Macro Stomp or Kaiju Step. Please don't call it Kaiju Step, I beg of you. But yeah, um, I, some kind of techniques I got taught from company are in there. Uh, so you can literally just look up company sound design and all of his sound design live streams will come up. But yeah. Uh, and also, just a little bit of a side note, a uh, company did do an AMA recently, and I asked him if he had plans to do another sample pack, and he said, yeah, he has plans to do another sample pack. So, I'm so excited for when he finally releases that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get more into YouTube stuff, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.